Hi, once again, and welcome back. It's Liz Soria here, your tax advisor and also your QuickBooks accountant. Uh, folks, I have another short uh, video or you know podcast if you listen to this audio. Uh, today, we're going to discuss a little bit something different to what we did in, in one of my other uh, short videos, and I call them, these are called the QBO quick definition and the first one that I created was in regards to differences in when we when it comes to collecting money our favorite part right uh, so we talked I talked about what was the difference between an estimate what is the difference with a uh, actual uh, sales receipt and also with an invoice okay so if you haven't watched that uh, don't forget you know, and definitely, uh, you know, uh, watch that video or listen to the podcast because it's not something that you really need to visualize at this point. Uh, but I think it's important that you do know that there's definitions and, and the clearer you have that in your mind, the better it is going to be for you. So I know a lot of you out there are solo entrepreneurs or probably small business just starting up or perhaps, hey, you might have already, uh, you know, established, uh, uh, you know, business and that's great to hear that. And if that's the case, either way, we're always learning no matter what. And I always say that throughout all my, um, you know, uh, series and episodes that I have recorded for so many years. So again, last video, if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's about, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight here on the slide that I have. Again, it's not something that you need to watch if you don't want to. We talk about estimates, okay, the difference, and we also talk about sales receipts, and we talk about invoices, okay? But today, this, this actual recording is gonna be about what is the difference between a purchase order and also the actual um, accounts payable, which is, right, uh, the actual bill that you receive, and three, what is the difference with an expense, just a standard expense? Because there's three of those three things right there. There's a difference in QuickBooks. And I like to go ahead and take this opportunity to, uh, you know, briefly uh, give you a definition on it. So we're going to go here and under vendors, right, which is our AP section, accounts payable. And the first thing we're going to discuss, what is really a PO, right? So a PO is nothing more than a non-posting transaction, similar to an estimate, okay, that we talked about here. That does not uh, actually uh, affect your general ledger, general ledger accounts and neither your actual chart of account. I mean, it just, it doesn't affect your financial statements whatsoever, but it's good because, for example, when you have a vendor who's sending you a bill, usually it might not be a bill, let me say it could be a bill, and if it is, you still can record that into your QuickBooks, okay? Sort of like a reminder that you have, you know, that possible bill coming up. Uh, and what really helps is the same situation is that once you have recorded that purchase order into QuickBooks, and by the way, folks, it's got nothing to do whether you're using desktop or you're using, you know, online. It's the same same way almost uh, to, to convert these POs into a accounts payable, which is nothing more than a bill, which is our next step right here that I'm highlighting or, you know, showing an hour. So again, we receive a PO, right, which is nothing more than a, you know, a, 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 a kind of a proposal of what they're going to charge us, the vendor, uh, for their products and their services, be the one that you're doing. Now, you enter that in QuickBooks. If that happens to be the POs exactly the same amount and perhaps the same quantity or whatever it is that, that, that you purchase from that vendor, then all you need to do, is in, again, in a very simple, uh, you know, one, two, three process, is just click and go under purchase orders in your QuickBooks and you can convert those into actual you know bills okay again that's gonna save you a lot of time uh, so that's important that you understand that because again you don't have to retype the whole you know uh, information and we don't want to waste our time that's for sure now in these days uh, we're actually crunching uh, you know against time so again always remember that you do want to enter those peels so if you get them just enter them 
because it's going to save you time when the actual bill. Another thing that I like about it is that you can also make it comparable, okay? Because what if I, you agree uh, that a PO should have been, let's say, $500, and then suddenly now you get the bill, you know, depending on the net terms that the vendor gave you, uh, and then you realize that, you know, there's, there's a difference in the amount. It, it, hopefully it's less, good for you, but if it's more, then you need to question that because that's not what you agreed, right? So these are things it's nice to keep track of that. And then the nice thing about it is that, by the way, you can attach these POs into you know your system and you can have them scan and, and just you know into it to have them part of the actual you know uh, purchase order that way you can go back and look at it as a digital format and, and as a pdf okay so that's another thing and then what is the difference then with the actual entering bill in quickbooks means that it is going to affect your accounts payable all right so again if you run an accrual basis you're going to see this happen so when you go to your balance sheet, you're going to see, oh, accounts payable, you have an outstanding balance, a liability, right? Now, what is the third definition? Well, I've been asked many times, what is the difference with expense versus to an AP? Well, very simple. It is nothing more than something that you have not received a bill on and you just want to you know, recorded as a direct transaction in your books. So let's say, for example, you went to Office Depot or Staples or whatever it is, one of your, uh, you know, office stores in where you live, and suddenly, you know, you just purchased maybe a few items, and it doesn't matter what you pay for, but you, you, you didn't actually get a bill. You just pay them instantly, okay? So now you have a receipt. Okay, that's something else I discussed in, in the other series of these episodes. Now with that receipt, you can just enter as an expense. And actually, not only that, you can do them when, actually, your credit card, if you pay with a credit card, you can do it when you get the, the, the statement from that credit card, and then you can post it as an expense. Because credit cards usually are entered as an expense. With exception, again, if you already recorded an AP, accounts payable, and you actually pay with a credit card, then you want to make sure that you do still create in QuickBooks that bill instead of an expense account. All right, so hopefully that's clear enough, okay? So again, if you did pay one of your vendors with your credit card, but you still have a bill, okay then you want to match that credit card transaction with the bill that you have in quickbooks and if you don't have it then it's as simple as to record it and just match it with your credit card transactions i hope this helps you know especially when it comes to definitions because i know there's a lot of you know things going on with it with accounting you know uh, terminology as they call it and, and, and in general this is just you know i, I was i'm hoping that this is going to clear any doubts that you might have so again i'm here to help you uh and remember folks that we do offer private uh, web training. That's right. It's a private web training, which means that you're actually on the camera with me and I'm tapping into your system and we're going live in the training. So if you're fed up, you're, you're, you just don't have the time, you've been through too many videos or, you know, reading books and things that really haven't helped you, uh, or you feel even more confused about it, please reach out to me and my team because we're here to help. And like I said, I've been doing this very successfully, helping entrepreneurs to learn what they need to learn. I wanna say that very clear. Learn what you need to learn in your business based on your chart of account, based on your general your books, okay? I'm not gonna give you at the end of the you know training certificate, it's not gonna happen. Uh, I'm not teaching you A to Z. I wanna be very, very you know upfront with this. I'm teaching you what you want to learn and how to do the daily task or weekly, however it is that you want to handle your bookkeeping, and then for you not to waste any longer your time, and we can just invest. We have different packages. 
You can go to, our, uh, to, my, to my website, you can look at it, the flat rates, they come from three hours to you know uh, whatever hours you need. And it, it's just phenomenal, the results have been great for the majority of our you know, uh, business owners. So again, uh, they're very limited because most of the time, uh, I try to make those <laughs> trainings uh, because I'm the one who's an accountant. I am certified in several cookbooks since 2010. So either way, like I said, I know these videos can help when you go online and watch things for free. But remember, we always want to make an investment in ourselves. And, and like I said, if you really pick up a few things here and there, and that's great, but you still feel like you're not ready and or you're seeing a lot of issues <laughs> with your financial reports and you know these things are just not making sense because your gut feeling is telling you this is not good. This does not look right. Uh, instead of continuing entering more data, do yourself a favor. Like I said, reach out to us. I'd be happy to do a private web training. Please, I want to clarify that this is not a webinar. We're not going to have 50 people asking questions. No, none of that. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one training. And uh, that will be directly, like I said, with me or one of my teams with you. And that means one person from your end too. So we're not teaching three or five. We like to do one-on-one -on -one because we know that that's going to give you the best results to concentrate exclusively on you and you having our attention in your books. Okay. So once again, this story here with ETBS, you have a contact information. Let me put it up right here just in case. That way you can get in touch with us. Remember to like and share. Uh, we always are uh, very grateful for everybody who are subscribers and for those who are listening to us. And until the next episode, stay tuned. And I wish you a lot of success. And remember, if you need help, don't get stuck. Don't get nervous. Reach out to people that can help you. And even if you don't hire us, hire someone else who can help you. You know, that's what matters. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited about this. So take advantage that we're doing those private trainings for now. I don't know how long we're going to be able to continue doing that. It is time consuming. Uh, but I know you get good results and I'm happy with that because I want you to feel content and refer business. So once again, thank you so much, folks. And I will see you until next time. Thumbs up. Take care and be successful in your business. Take care.